And welcome back to everyone here on 2K Sports of our PGA Tour coverage. We're picking up the action at the 13th. Look at that. You don't want that ball back. And what's in front of them there, Henny? He's setting up here from about 115 yards. Over 300 yards from the tee as well. A wonderful shot, a chance for Booty here on the 13th. This putt is of nine feet. This is what they have left for Birdie here. Go on, get in the hole. And with that putt, he's bounced back immediately from his previous drop shot. The leader now has a one-stroke advantage. Welcome to the tee at this par five hole. Lovely effort, that. Second shot here on the 14th hole. Oh, that was pure. And taking aim from around 100 yards here. Wind back into their grill. They need to flight this one down. Clubbing up, smart. Got to control it, though. Let's see. Good shot there. Already had a few birdies today. Another opportunity for another one. Let's take a look. Why don't we catch up with what Lydia goes up to? She's currently ahead in this rivalry. Let's see what happens. That was a gallant attempt. Terrific shot. Almost an eagle. And Henny, what are they looking at here? This is a 12-footer here. They've got this putt to tie Lydia Ko. That will work on a roll here with back-to-back -back birdies. Kind of like it. Two in a row. He's feeling it. Now, eight shots back after that hole. Now on the tee after a birdie, fired up and ready for more.
Well, well played. Playing this shot from about 180 yards. Puff of wind blowing right to left for him. Going with the seven. Setting up miles from the hole. This is all that's left to pull ahead of Lydia Ko. They're going to try to apply some pressure here. Looking really good, this one. Ah, that's frustrating. And this putt coming up for his par. And the sight we used to see a lot, Xander Shoffley in top spot. Stepping up to the 16th tee now, and after a par at the last, a chance to perhaps signal some intent. Should find the green here. Seemed to lose the handle on that shot. Coming up a little short with that effort. Not bad, though. And he needs this to save par. Oh, gee, that line was looking good, wasn't it? Our work here is done. Let's head to the next hole. Now switching our focus to Lydia Ko. She's currently one stroke better than her rival and playing partner today. How close was that to going in the hole? Great shot. Let's take a look at the current standings. And it's Xander Shoffley in first place. Trying to forget the bogey on the last as they step onto the tee. Really hoping they play this one aggressively. And they found themselves in the first cut. All right, facing a little up and down here to save the par. <laughs> 11 feet left to the hole. Nice little par putt here. That's a good putt to make, that one. Sitting at four over for the event. And Rich, after the first 17, have tested the plan. They find themselves on yet one more examination with this last hole. I love this hole because if you're leading and have a chance to win, this is the tee shot you want. There's all kinds of room out there to the right-hand side. Tee it high and let it fly. Give yourself the best opportunity to go into this elevated green with a short iron to make it as easy as possible on you. And it's much easier said than done, Luke, as you and I both well know. And here we are with the third shot. They need to flight this one down into the wind. Got great connection here. Yeah, this is looking good. Playing within their comfort zone there. A par putt on the table. Oh. 
Oh, so close. Good putters will make these. Right on five feet. So far, so good. That signs off on this player's performance for the day. So the opening round in the books, Rich. Impressed with your efforts here in the booth. Thanks for your time. Absolutely. Look, looking forward to watching the next two rounds. Well, that just about concludes our coverage. I'm Luke Elvey, and on behalf of Rich Beam, plus all the hard-working... Sports and the PGA Tour are delighted to bring you the season-long race for the FedEx Cup. We're at the Legends Championship. Today's coverage is about to begin. Pleased you could join us for this second round action. I'm Luke Elvey with my mate Rich Beam in the booth. And Beamer, this player really hasn't been getting it going in this tournament, finds himself trailing the lead. What are your expectations of them today? Well, certainly they're stuck in second gear out there, aren't they? They just make a birdie or two and then they get it back with a bogey. So they need to quit making mistakes. They need to go ahead and start putting this thing in third and fourth gear and start cruising down the highway a little bit quicker because right now they're trailing and they can't afford to give any more uh, back. Looking forward to this, Rich. Let's get into the action. Pretty good shot there. All right, Henny. What's he got in front of him here with this putt? Can't be too aggressive here. Take your medicine and move on. This is down the hill. Putting for a par now. And that's an opening hole par for this player. Nothing wrong with an opening par, just easing their way into this round. Let's see what happens here on the second hole. Setting up in some very deep rough. Opting for the three wood. What an escape artist. That was a horrible lie. 15 feet to the cup. Wonderful shot. Why don't we catch up with what Lydia goes up to? It's been so tight. She's tied here with her rival. And can she pull ahead now? How close was that to going down? So after that effort, let's take a look at the leaderboard. Xander Shoffley currently enjoying first place in this one. I'm pretty sure this player will be buoyed by that birdie back at the last. Let's see if they can deliver another one. Opting for the five iron. That doesn't look good, Rich. Bit too far right for my liking. Second shot here on the third. Saver coming up for this fella. Looking really good, this one. Solid par putt, that. Now switching our focus to Lydia Ko. It's been so tight. She's tied here with her rival. And can she pull ahead now? Currently at four over for the tournament. We have a par five at this one. No harm, no foul there with that shot. Time for the second shot here at the four.
Well, this is one of those lies that dictates a shot. It doesn't seem like it's a tough one. A chance to get amongst the action of the top 20. This putt drops. Nice stroke. Always nice to hold those for a birdie. That hole looks double the size for this player this week. Well, that's certainly a step in the right direction. Keep it going. And now teeing off on this par four hole. Well, there's no doubt they'd have some positive vibes coming off that birdie. Let's see if they can keep it rolling. That's nicely done. Why don't we catch up with what Lydia Ko's up to? It's been so tight. She's tied here with her rival. And can she pull ahead now? Second shot here on the fifth. Quality shot, that one. Oh, good look at Birdie here. If he holds this, Lydia Ko gets behind and he can potentially get on a roll in this rivalry. And that's for Birdie. Well hold. And I like it. Two in a row. Sitting at a couple over for the event. Time to tee off at the sixth. Yeah, no bunkers on this tee shot. Plenty of room to hit it both right and left. But if you miss it wide one direction or another, you're going to find all kinds of troubles with those tall trees. Just that one bunker that fronts the left-hand side of the green here. Again, though, a lot of runoff areas around this green makes that second shot so much more difficult to get it close. Going with the five iron here. Uh, I'm not sure that's what they had in their mind. That's further right than they wanted. Getting ready to play their third. Wow, that almost went in the hole. Looks like a pretty straightforward five-footer to me. This is what they have left for par here. And down she goes. Our current leader is enjoying a one-shot lead. We have a par three on this one. Well, on the tee now, coming off a par. Chance to pipe one up the middle.
going for less club here. Now switching our focus to Lydia Ko. She's trying to pull ahead in this group rivalry. Let's see what happens. Get the fist pump ready. This looks like it's going in. Let's return to live play now. Never seen a scorecard that doesn't look good with a two on it. Just didn't drop. Yeah, that looked to be a bit of a misread. Pretty good chance here. This one's for par. Ooh. Okay, let's head to the next. The leader now has a one stroke advantage. Setting up now on a par four. Handy effort, that one. What kind of shot are they facing here, Henny? By my estimation, he's got around 170 here. Looks to have chosen the 7-iron. This one is right down the pipe. What a skillful approach shot. This player not holding back in their rivalry with Lydia Ko. Just a four-footer remaining. Nice one. Fourth booty of the day. And a sight we used to seeing a lot. Xander Shoffley in top spot. Now on the tee, fresh off a birdie. A great opportunity to build on that momentum. Not a bad line, this one. Time to take their approach shot into the ninth. And here we are with the third shot. Oh, that was tidy. That should ensure the up and down. Love watching this player around the greens. A chance for a birdie if this goes down. Why don't we catch up with what Lydia goes up to? She's currently trailing her rival. Let's see what happens here. Oh, stop it. What a way to make your par. And now this is why you can never get comfortable, even if you're leading a PGA Tour Pro. This is what they do. They mean business. Well, I'm interested in my buddy Beamer's thoughts at this duel after nine holes. Luke, so far, it's been entertaining watching these two go head to head. Not too sure exactly how this is going to play out, but so far, so good. Love watching these two compete.
Yeah, that one will play. What kind of shot are they facing here, Henny? He's got, mm, I'd say, a solid 145 here. Going with the pitching wedge here. This should play. Pay attention, folks. That's how you play golf. Right on four feet. Should make this one. Gee, that's good playing. Six birdies in a round. John, talk to us. What do you got for us? Hey, guys, we're checking in with Xander Shoffley as he gets set for his next shot here on the 11th. And how did that shot impact the score? Let's have a look at the leaderboard. Teeing off here at the 11th. All right, we're going with an extra club here. Good shot there, Beamer. And this part to move into the top 10. Was on a good line, putting for par. And there it is. He's currently tied for 13th. Let's head to the 12th hole, shall we? Again, no bunkers off the tee shot here, Luke, though, but anything missing out to the right or even far left, you're just going to have all kinds of problems. Second shot down the hill to a green that's surrounded by water in the front, bunkers both left and right. I love this golf course. I love the beauty of it, but I got to say, it is a really difficult course. This effort from Tony Finau just a short time ago. This is his third. Okay, time to return to the action. Second shot here on the 12th. Well, this person displays the power game in pure fashion there. Using the big muscles to get it home in two there. Trying to get to two under with this putt. Good stuff today, especially the short game has been really sharp today. Trying to get to one under here with this putt. He's staring down a birdie putt here.
keeper shot that, and that will take him to one under. He finds himself currently tied for 12. We've arrived at a par four hole. That swing reminded me of smooth jazz. Great rhythm. From about 130 yards here. Looks like they're going with the pitching wedge. Look at the line on this one. Get in the hole. That's a super shot. That's another green in regulation. Dare I say, Luke, this player has been in fuego with his approach shots. Another green in regulation. And that's eight birdies today. That's a good way to move into the top ten. He finds himself currently tied for ninth. Let's see what happens here at the 14th. <laughs> Looks like they put a good swing on that one. That should find the short stuff. Maybe going for the green, are we? <laughs> Sitting at two under par in a share of ninth position. Okay, Henny, what's he looking at with this putt? This one, guys, he's got around nine feet. Like the look of this one. Well played. And that will take him to three under. Now switching our focus to Lydia Ko. Yeah, she's down, she's behind, her rivals scooting ahead. Let's see what happens. It's time to check on the leaderboard. Trailing by eight strokes now after that hole. Well, let's get amongst this 15th hole. Oh, that is crushed. And he's down there. Setting up this one, hitting into a downhill green. They might be taking a bit less club here.
looks to be going with the five iron. That's not the shot they're after. What a shame. Has hit a lot of greens today, just not on this occasion. And if this can go down, he'll save par. Yep, tracking well. Yeah, nothing to sweat over that one. We'll hold. Why don't we catch up with what Lydia goes up to? She's trying to pull ahead in this group rivalry. Let's see what happens. That one should find the surface. Oh, that's incredible. It's in the hole. Whoa, check this out. In fuego, dialed in, call it what you will. Pulling it from the fairway. Thank you very much. Teeing off here on the 16th hole. Going with the 9-iron, nine nine, I think. Well, that's comfortably on the dance floor. Well played. That's a great shot here at 16. It sets up a chance for birdie. Ouch, that hurts. This putt just five feet away from the hole. That was a gallant attempt. Just a tiny putt is all that remains. And unfortunately heading in the wrong direction on the leaderboard after that hole. Let's see what happens here at the 17th. Really hoping they play this one aggressively. Second shot here on the 17th hole. Now switching our focus to Lydia Ko. She's currently trailing her rival. Let's see what happens here. Let's catch up with the current proceedings. What an opportunity to make a birdie. Well, what a way to bounce back. Nice putt to hold. And with that, we'll move to three under par. Our current leader is enjoying a one-shot lead. A long par four this hole. I love this hole because if you're leading and have a chance to win, this is the tee shot you want. There's all kinds of room out there to the right-hand side. Tee it high and let it fly. Give yourself the best opportunity to go into this elevated green with a short iron to make it as easy as possible on you. And it's much easier said than done, Luke, as you and I both well know. Henny, what's the player facing here? You're going to need one or two clubs more because this green is sitting up. Going with the seven. This one looks to be on a pretty good line. Well, that certainly makes putting a lot easier when you can hit a shot like that. Four feet to the cup.
Ooh, nice looking putt. And another round safely in the books. And at the end of their round, they find themselves in seventh on the leaderboard. Same look, enjoyed the day, looking forward to tomorrow. On behalf of Ridge Beam and all the hardworking folks at 2K Sports, I'm Luke Elvey. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. UK Sports, in association with the PGA Tour, is delighted to present the season-long race for the FedEx Cup. Today's coverage of the Legends Championship is about to start. Pleased you could join us for this final round action. I'm Luke Elvey, here alongside Rich Beam. And Rich, as this next goal for starts the day, what are you thinking about their chances? Right now, Luke, this player is trailing heading into the final round. However, Many things can happen. If the leader stumbles, this player's got a great opportunity to bypass, overtake, and win this tournament. Oh, I've got those special chills up the spine. I know today's going to be a beauty. Let's get into it. Let's see what kind of tone he sets for himself today. Out of boy, good shot. This shot coming from around the 150 yard marker. Choosing the nine iron here. Four left. Trying to get out of this pine straw here. This is one of those lengthy putts 
Good one just to get close. Now this one, this is important. This for par. Oh, what a shame. That would have been a nice one to hold. Well, I think they fell in love with the line, forgot about the pace. Currently at minus three for the event. Time to step on your tee shot here at this long par four. Oh, that was flushed. Penny, what have they got in front of them here? Got to make sure to repay a pitch mark here. It's going to leave one. It's downhill. Might even get some spin here. Not a bad approach. Grab the putter from the caddy. You're dancing. John, what's going on? Talk to us, Goose. Hello up there. We are checking in down here with Lydia Ko as she gets set for her next shot here on the 12th. This putt coming up is for Birdie. Ooh, right by the hole. And that should secure the par on this one. Managing to maintain their position on the leaderboard. Let's see what happens here at the third hole. And after a par at the last, chance to maybe take a step in the right direction here. for the five iron he hit that pretty loose yep that's a water ball getting ready to play their third going with the five iron here all right he's going with a little extra club gone against the caddy here let's see if it was the right shout And here we are with their four. Oh, wouldn't that have been nice? And he's down there. You got a read? Careful not to leave this one short. It's back uphill and nothing worse than leaving an uphill putt short. Oh, gee, that line was looking good, wasn't it? This is a triple bogey attempt here. And unfortunately dropping back to even with the card. Not much happening. Moving down the leaderboard, never a good sign. Second shot here on the fourth. And here we are with the third shot. He's had a tough time of it on the greens here today. Hopefully all that'll change right here. This one's tracking. Oh, that's frustrating. An opportunity to make a par here. In she goes. Let's head to the next. Let's head over to the 14th hole. Let's take a look at the leaderboard. 
So no movement there. He stays it even with the card. around 110 yards to go. Chosen the pitching wedge here. Getting ready to play their third. Five feet coming up to the cup. Trying to save par here. This is looking solid, what they wanted. Now, nice to make a mid-range par putt. And that par ensures he'll stay right there at even par. Next up is this par four hole. Yeah, no bunkers on this tee shot. Plenty of room to hit it both right and left, but if you miss it wide one direction or another, you're going to find all kinds of troubles with those tall trees. Just that one bunker that fronts the left-hand side of the green here. Again, though, a lot of runoff areas around this green makes that second shot so much more difficult to get it close. Hope it gets a good kick to the left. Wow, what a shot. Our man on the ground, John, he's down there. What's the news? Hello up there. We are checking in down here with Lydia Ko as she gets set here for her next shot on the 16th. This one just outside seven feet to the hole. And that will drop in for birdie. And with it, he moves to one under par. Well, good move there. Anything north on the leaderboard's always pleasant. Oh, this would be handy if we could bounce right. That's well played. Anything on the green from there was fine. We're lining up the birdie putt here. And that's how you roll the rock. That's a good putt to make that one. That's back-to-back -back birdies. And with it, he'll move to a couple under par. New Zealand's Lydia Ko setting up her next shot. So after that effort, this is what the leaderboard looks like. And as we take a look at the leaderboard, it's Xana Shoffley in first place. And they'd be feeling buoyed with confidence after that birdie. Here's a good chance to maintain the momentum. Nicely done from around 180 yards out. Needs this one to kick right. Well, that'll work up on the dance floor. Could have been worse. Already made a few birdies today, and this is another good look. Just didn't drop. This putt's about four feet from the hole. Well hold. And as we move along, it's Xander Shoffley in first place. Teeing off now on the ninth hole. This looks to be a fairway seeker to me. And now we go to the 12th, where this happened just a moment ago. Always lovely to see a long-range bomb made. Let's recap it. OK, let's get back to it, shall we? Playing from around 240 yards. Seems to have chosen the three-wood. Well, they look like they're taking this on in two. Yeah, well, it might not be on the green, but it's right up near the surface. 
What a sensational play on this par five there, Luke. went down oh this will be good for the momentum let's make this birdie putt oh so close three feet to go here to the hole this for par our leader is enjoying a three-stroke advantage time to face a par four Well, that's a handy shot. Playing from around 160 yards. Going with the eight iron here. This would be a great up and down. Mm -hmm. Straight out of the top drawer. Judging it beautifully. Nice line. He finds himself in a share of 11th. Par threes always offer up that hope of a hole in one. That's a touch of the Freddie Couples rhythm right there. A bit wild on approach there. And there's highlights of plenty out there on the golf course. Let's take a look at this incredible shot. They've chosen to club down on this one. This would be a momentum saver here, getting this up and down. Oh, I thought that one was going in. If he makes this, he'll save his par. Cut that. Oh, here he comes into the top 10 with a bolt. Now teeing off on the 12th hole. Again, no bunkers off the tee shot here, Luke, though, but anything missing out to the right or even far left, you're just going to have all kinds of problems. Second shot down the hill to a green that's surrounded by water in the front, bunkers both left and right. I love this golf course. I love the beauty of it. But I got to say, it is a really difficult course. Well, that's showcasing their power there, Rich. Absolutely. Love watching a player be bold and be rewarded for it. OK, let's get back to the action. Trying to get it to four under with this putt. It was on a good line. This one's for birdie. And that puddle drop. Well done. And that will take him to three under. And there's no movement on the leaderboard after that hole. Let's see what happens here at the 13th. That one's right out of the top drawer. 
Well, I'm playing this one from around 120 yards out. That's inside the house of opportunity. What's in front of them, Henny? This is downhill. Can't be too bold. Looking really good. Ooh. No, that's too bad. Yeah, it's just about three feet away. That gets the job done. Currently at three under for the event. And after that good play, moving up the leaderboard. Oh, absolutely flushed. Second shot here on the 14th. Here's a look at John Rahm from earlier. This is how you do it seven days a week. And here we are with the third shot. And this putt is for a big four on the scorecard. This is buckets. That's a lovely speed on that putt. So close to the hole. He's currently tied for ninth. Time to face a par four now. That swing so pure, it reminds me of Adam Scott's. John, what's going on out there? Hey, guys, we're checking in with Will Zalatoris as he gets set for his next shot here on the 18th. Taking aim from around 190 yards here. Downwind on this shot. Looks to be going with the six iron. A few shots under par at the moment, in a share of ninth. Bad got a little out of control, I think. Hard to control the distance when you're coming out of the rough. How close was that to going down? This is a bogey putt coming up. He's currently sitting in 14th place. Moving down the leaderboard, Luke, never a good thing. Opting for the 9-iron. Nine Needs -nine. this one to kick right. But not a bad approach, that one up onto the green. A couple of putts from there, and that'll be a pretty good hole. This putt is to move inside the all-important top 10. Oh, that would have been nice to make. The leader now has a one-stroke advantage. Next up is this two-shot hole. Definitely looking to make a move on this hole. Could be interesting. Oh, that's piped. That's heading down the runway. Second shot here on the 17th. Well struck. Seven feet to the cup. Their short game today has been absolutely sublime fun to watch. It's got a chance. John, do you have any info down there? Hey, guys, we are checking in with John Rahm as he gets set for his next shot here on the 14th. So after that effort, let's take a look at the leaderboard. Our leader is a couple of shots up at this stage. Now take the stroll to the final tee of this round.
I love this hole because if you're leading and have a chance to win, this is the tee shot you want. There's all kinds of room out there to the right-hand side. Tee it high and let it fly. Give yourself the best opportunity to go into this elevated green with a short iron to make it as easy as possible on you. And it's much easier said than done, Luke, as you and I both well know. We're in this putt for a final score of 72. Looks good. And that brings a close to this event. Well, Rich, you know better than me, you've got to be pleased with a top 10 in a major, don't you? Especially your first one. Big time finish in a big time event. Top 10, nothing to be ashamed about. Well, on behalf of myself, Luke Elvey and Rich Beam, thanks for tuning in. Catch you tomorrow.
2K Sports, in association with the PGA Tour, proudly presents the season-long race for the FedEx Cup. Today's coverage of the Norwood Invitational is about to get underway. Hello, I'm Luke Elvey, alongside 2002 PGA Championship winner Rich Beam, who's in the booth. And it's a hello to Henny Koyak down on the course following our featured group. Hey, Luke. So great to be here with you and Rich. Looking forward to following this group down on the course today because this player has developed a rivalry with none other than Tiger Woods. They certainly do not lack in confidence. This is going to be a very entertaining group to follow. Well, Henny, quite a challenge that this player has said for themselves. We've seen them beat many of their rivals this season. But there are not many people that can go up against the great Tiger Woods and succeed. History's told us that. Oh, well, they certainly do not lack in confidence. This is going to be a very entertaining group to follow indeed. Well, I'm jumping around in my seat and I can also see Rich Beam doing exactly the same. He managed this feat back in 2002 when he won the PGA at Hazeltine over the great Tiger Woods. Oh, please, Luke, don't mention that. Once we get Rich on his high horse, there's no getting him down again. Although he has shown that it can be done. Tiger Woods can be beaten. However, it is such a tall order. I know that this player has beaten all of these incredible roster of players in all these rivalries so far. But come on, this is Tiger Woods. Can it really be done today? Well, that's the question we're going to get answered, aren't we? Very few people have ever laid claim to beating Tiger head-to-head. -head. Good luck in your rivalry. You're going to need it. Currently one under for the round. This hole here is a par four. Nice birdie in the last hole for a change. First one of the day. They needed it desperately. Now, next hole, looking for more. Yep, that'll work. That's fine. And what are we looking at here, Henny? Yeah, I think he's got around 135. Going with the pitching wedge here. They're going with a bit more club here. Let's see if it was the right call. This player showing zero signs of any nerves as they play against their rival and playing partner, Tiger Woods. What a fantastic approach. Always love these opportunities, especially when it's for birdie. Ouch, that hurts. Just a short putt remaining here. That was a top-level approach shot, but unfortunately they walk off the green with a par. And being a couple off the lead, they can't afford to miss those birdie opportunities. 
great looking shot this a wonderful shot a chance for booty here at the second so after that effort let's have a look at the contenders and the pretenders This hole is a par three. Looks like they've got the five wood. Nicely done. Why don't we catch up with our man in the hot seat, Tiger Woods? He's got some work to do, but he's only one back from his rival. Yeah, the wind's really starting to blow, but that didn't faze them. What are we looking at for this putt, Henny? He's paced it, he's read it. It's time, little 27 footer. What a great opportunity here for a look at a birdie. That was a gallant attempt. And this one is for his par. He's currently tied for 11th. Here we are at the fourth hole. And after a par at the last, a chance to perhaps signal some intent. That dog will hunt. Look out, world, was his statement when he came out onto the Pro Tour. And we look back in the greatness in sports, right across all sport in the world. Has one player or one athlete had a greater impact on their sport more than Tiger Woods did for golf? I, I hate to say no, because I also look back at the sport, Luke, when Arnold Palmer came through. Um, good looking fella and just kind of came from a blue collar background and I kind of think that Arnold Palmer paved the way for a Tiger Woods then then go out and dominate because golf was already on the radar it just wasn't nearly as much on the radar uh, as it is now because of Tiger but I think because of what what Arnold Palmer did um, he set the, the groundwork for all of this. But in, in saying that, in the modern era, in the modern game, to be fair, and you look at every sport across the books, and I don't care whether you're talking about you know, Tom Brady, LeBron James right now, uh, it, it's, I don't think you have a bigger player globally, uh, with the exception of maybe Messi or Ronaldo, than Tiger Woods. I, I just think that from a global standpoint, Tiger Woods whenever he shows his face anywhere people lose their minds like I, grown men lose their minds if they get a glimpse of tiger woods from 50 yards away i've seen it before luke and i'll see it again but it it never seems to amaze me baffle me make me giggle a little bit like holy cow this guy is this guy's elvis he's elvis presley i mean because elvis was the biggest guy in the world as far as i could tell um so I, it's just it's mind-boggling how big Tiger Woods is in this game uh, and continues to be and will forever be. Oh, well done. Sitting at minus three, just behind the leader. Looks like they're definitely going for it. Oh, I like the courage here, Rich, getting after this par five in two. As they should. What a play. Hopefully they'll reward it for that play. From the sand, looking to get up and down. That's outstanding. 
Mark that down on the highlight reel. And this putt is to move into a share for the lead. Come on, ball. Come on. That'll sting a bit. Just four feet remaining between him and the hole. Hey, that's a chance. You can mark it down. That's birdie number four today. And that will take him to four under. Our current leader is enjoying a one-shot lead. Oh, exciting times on the tee of a par five. Five wins so far this season. This one looks to be bunker bound, Rich. Not good. Getting ready to play their third. Just one stroke off the lead. Well, just like Lloyd Christmas, you've got a chance. Butting for birdie. Oh, gee, that line was looking good, wasn't it? That's disappointing. Pretty straightforward four-footer coming up here. Well, that's a momentum maintainer. Well done. Now heading over to Tiger Woods. He's currently trailing his rival. Let's see what happens here. Here's Tiger Woods. Wow, what a save. That was spectacular, Luke. Great work, great shot. And after that effort, this is how the leaderboard looks right now. Patrick Cantlay is at the top of the leaderboard with a one-stroke lead. Just a couple to play here on the opening nine. Here's the tee shot at the eighth. Well, on the tee now, coming off a par. Chance to pipe one up the middle. Looks to have chosen the seven iron. A great shot here at the eighth, and a chance for birdie. You know what? That deserves a golf clap. This putt to move into a tie for first. The putt is underway. And racking up their fifth birdie of the day. And with that, he'll move to five under par. Well, that was a positive hole. A little shift up the leaderboard. Well played. Time now to begin the ninth hole, Rich. What kind of rhythm is that? It must be tough falling out of bed every day with a rhythm like that. After a very consistent run of play over the last half a dozen starts or so, Rich, this player's coming with a whole heap of confidence and they look to me to be one of the players to beat. Do you agree? We've seen this player time and time again contend for tournaments and it is no surprise to see him doing it once again this week. It is so fun watching this player. They're in top form. 
What are we looking at for this putt, Henny? They've just got to focus on hitting the back of the cup, guys. This is up the hill, bit of extra juice needed. This one has eyes for the hole. Why don't we catch up with what Tiger Woods is up to? Now, who'd have thought we'd see this? He is behind his rival. Can he do the catching up that's necessary? Let's catch up with Tiger Woods, shall we? Looks to have opted for the eight iron. What a shot! Almost went in the bucket. And after that effort, that's how it looks. Well, this is when the knees start to knock. The sweat starts to appear on the palms of your hands, Rich. Just a slender lead with nine to play. Yeah, but I, I like the position. I like being out in front. It forces the other players to come catch you. I like their position. You like that, didn't you? Sitting at six under for the day. Currently in the lead. That uh, looked a little wayward. Rich, considering everything that's been said about the great Tiger Woods throughout his entire career, it almost seems superfluous to add anything more to it. But what that man has meant to the game and, and, and again, to people like yourself who have gone on to win major championships as well. Yeah, I would think what Tiger has brought to the game is just a... He changed the perception of the game as it being kind of an old man sport. And all of a sudden, he's out there winning and fist pumping and getting the crowds fired up and everybody into the game. It's it just kind of changed the entire complexion of it. No longer do you have these these old guys that are dressed poorly with big beer bellies. And all of a sudden, you know, you got guys that are young and, and worn these tight fitting clothes going into the gym and treating it more like a business instead of just a sport. He really changed the entire uh, dynamic of the game, the landscape of, of what it takes to become a great player. And. You know, everybody else was just kind of sitting there in awe going, well, how does he do this? Well, it's almost like he had a plan, a master plan to go out there and listen, I'm going to dominate by being physically better, mentally better, and I'm just going to steamroll these guys. And when he first started doing that, everybody's kind of looking back on, uh, okay, he's taking this seriously. Maybe I need to start taking it seriously too, right? So it, it's just one of those things that came along that nobody knew what to really expect of him. But he, he, he told us right away, listen, I expect to win every single week out there, and, and uh, sure enough, that's what he did. Yeah, it's just about three feet away. This is a must-make, guys. They've got this for bogey. Why don't we catch up with our man in the hot seat, Tiger Woods? He's currently trailing his rival. Let's see what happens here. Oh, yeah! A thing of beauty! Tough bunker shot. No bother whatsoever for this player. They find the bottom of the cup. Let's see what happens here at the 11th hole. The tempo there was exquisite. Rich, obviously, and we've joked about it a fair bit in this game, that you've been one of the rare players to take Tiger Woods down in his prime. But what was it like to play in the Tiger era and just how dominant he was? It was simply amazing. You knew that each and every week that he showed up to a tournament, you better have your game ready to go because you assumed that he was going to be firing at all cylinders. Because even when he wasn't, his game was still good enough to beat most everybody in those fields. You wanted him there because you always want to test yourself against the best. However, it, it, if you weren't playing very well, you're kind of fearful teeing it up because you just knew that your best at that moment in time wasn't nearly going to be good enough to beat Tiger no matter what he brought to the table. He made each and every player look at their game in a different way and try and dissect it 
in order to weed out anything that didn't really need to be worked on and got them more specific in the areas that they weren't good at, their deficient areas, whether it's the short game, the driver, the iron play, whatever it is. But Tiger really made you take a long, hard look at your game and figure out where it's at because you knew that you had to be at your best to beat him. And here we are with the third shot. He's currently tied for the lead. Nicely done. Now heading over to Tiger Woods. Now, who'd have thought we'd see this? He is behind his rival. Can he do the catching up that's necessary? Well, it's fair to say that that approach didn't hit the mark. Now trying to draw that one in there, but not committing to it, leaving it out. What's in front of them, Henny, with this putt? Setting up this putt 11 feet from the cup. That's a good save in the end for a bogey. Just one off the lead after that hole. And now we find ourselves with a par four here. Rich, we talked about so much and we heard so many of them throughout the years. A tiger roar just sounded different to any other roar on the golf course. Explain just the energy of that and what you endured. Well, the tiger roar is usually involved in about 35,000 folks and the, any other roar was about 3,500. Um, so that was already a massive difference. You just knew it. There's just an energy in the air. When you heard a roar go up, you immediately could tell whether it was tiger or it was somebody else and it all kind of depends on how you were affected by it and i think that where a lot of players got into into trouble was listening for the roars and listening what kind of roar it was and when they let it into their head that it was a tiger roar then i need to do something better i need to change it up real quick and in fact that's probably what hurt them more than anything else but Listen, when Tiger did something fantastic, everybody on the golf course knew it was him. Well played, mate. Time for the second shot at the 14th. Not bad. Why don't we catch up with what Tiger Woods is up to? He's currently trailing his rival. Let's see what happens here. That was wonderfully done. A lot on the line here. This putt for a share of top spot. And a big moment for this player with just four holes left. Currently at minus five now for the day. Gotta like it, moving up the leaderboard, never a bad thing. Time to hit a good one here at the 15th. And choosing the eight iron here. Now, yeah, good safe shot this one. That should find the surface. Mm, that's right out of the copy books. Exquisite. Luke, nothing gets past you. Yes, this kid is a stud. Surely it's going to. Why don't we catch up with our man in the hot seat, Tiger Woods? Now, who'd have thought we'd see this? He is behind his rival. Can he do the catching up that's necessary? Oh, that's a lovely shape shot.
Uh, great shot. So after that effort, this is the current standings on the course. The leader now has a one-stroke advantage. Three holes remaining, folks. Hang on to your hats. This is going to be a wild and woolly finish. Let's see what happens here at the 16th. Tough tee shot here. Bunkers left, water right. Find the fairway or else. Well, there's a very good reason why he's leading this tournament, and that's Exhibit A. Put every ounce they had into that drive. Going with the eight iron here. This one headed out to the left. Uh, that was a little untidy, wasn't it? Straight into the water. Playing their fourth shot. He leads the field by a stroke. Henny, you've had the chance to have a look over this one? He's got to be careful this doesn't get away from him here. This is downhill. Oh, just missed. Oh, dear. This next putt now for double bogey. Just two shots back after that hole. Well, of these holes, the short par four. Do you be bold or lay up? How much do you trust your swing? Go for it and only 327. Lay up. Bunkers right, water left. That ball looked a little thirsty. Getting ready to play their third. Just a couple back from our leader. We need this one to bounce right. Okay, that'll work. Ooh, a 12-footer. Love to make a few of these today. Solid little par putt here. Just didn't drop. That's well hold. Now heading over to Tiger Woods. He's just coming off a drop shot on that last hole. Didn't that look good for a long time? And after that effort, let's take a look at how it stands. And on the tee now, coming off the bogey. Might have a bit of a sting in the tail, I'd imagine. Difficult tee shot, water lurking down the left-hand side. Don't hit it where the wild things are. They're thinking of going for this one, guys. Got to be aggressive. Love this play out here. Going with a three-wood here. Wonderfully played. And this part to move into a tie for third. Didn't quite have the right stuff there. Let's move one step closer to the lead here. This putt for a share of fourth. That's tracking. And that brings to an end his event. Well, there was no doubt this player was one of the players to watch this week, but ultimately Rich unable to get the victory. One of the best players in the game, but just couldn't quite get it out of second gear this week you know day late dollar short however you want to look at it didn't get the victory on behalf of rich beam henny kuyak john mccarthy i'm luke elvey saying so long from 2k sports
2K Sports, in association with the PGA Tour, is proud to bring you the season-long race for the FedEx Cup. Today's coverage of the Zurich Classic of New Orleans is about to start. I'm Luke Elvey, alongside Rich Beam in the booth, and it's a hello to Henny Koyak down on the course, following our featured group. Hey Luke and Rich, I'm looking forward to treading the fairways again with these two because they were absolute fire the first time round. And I have a feeling that after their exchanges on social media, it'll be even more spicy out here. Yes, but they certainly have to make the most of every moment they get because there'll be very few today. Fire up. This is a big rivalry, this one. Just let that shot be water off a duck's back. TPC Louisiana is a very interesting golf course made on some pretty flat land, Rich. Absolutely, and this hole shows you exactly what to expect. Second shot to a very tiny green. Tiny greens dotting this entire layout. Hit one close here, and you can expect to make a birdie. Standing over this one, and it's a very long putt. This is their look at birdie. Oh, so close. And just a little bit of clean-up work remaining on this hole. He finds himself in a share of 13th. 
Rich, if you missed a birdie opportunity at the first, you've certainly got one here at the second. Yes, par five is pretty much just straight away. You got to avoid those bunkers down the left hand side. For those players laying up, you got to lay it up shy of the big bunker down the right hand side. This green sits ever so slightly above the fairway. And again, they're just not that big of targets. It really is a cool golf course designed by Pete Dye. Oh, golf clap. That's a beauty. So exciting to have an eagle putt here. Appears to have overcooked this one. All right, Henny. What's he got in front of him here with this putt? Straight back up this hill. Can be firm here. Top effort, that. Well, this would be a good one to make. It's for par. Now let's switch our focus to Ricky Fowler. He's trying to pull ahead in this group rivalry. Let's see what happens. Let's take a look at the leaderboard. So, no movement on the leaderboard there, remaining at even overall. The third hole is a, a long par three, measuring 230 yards. Be careful of the wind here. You can't always feel it as those trees on the left sometimes block it out. Missing it right is an obvious no-no, but missing it left is no guaranteed of an up and down either. The green slopes away pretty severely over there. Wow, that almost went in the hole. Well, this would be a great par putt if you can make this. Yeah, that's well judged. Yeah, well hold. Let's move on to the next. Sitting at one over for the day. TPC Louisiana might be known as a birdie fest. However, you're going to find plenty of challenges, including the par 4-4. Four four. How can bunkers that are so minuscule be so agonizing? That's exactly what these are down the left-hand side of the fourth hole. You avoid those, and you get a good look at the green for your second shot that gently works away from the player. Opting for the three-wood. Not the result they were after there. Not too sure what they were thinking. Too much club. It's Ricky Fowler's turn now. And here we are with the third shot. Just three strokes back. That's a wonderfully played chip shot there. Just eyeballing that one, trying to make it. Trailing by four strokes. Rich the fifth is a shortish par four by today's standards, but still enough there to mess with your ball. Players want to move the tee shot from right to left on this hole because there's some trees on the tee box that'll kind of force you that direction. So driver may not be the play. The second shot, however, that's where it gets interesting. This green absolutely belongs in a skate park. This has more humps and bumps and wobbles in it. It is a very cool design. They're a long way from the hole here. Work to be done. Ooh, right by the hole. Just three feet to the cup. Needs this putt to tie Ricky Fowler. Now four back after that hole. The six is a tremendous par four. Plenty of golf hole, this one. Water all the way down the left-hand side, so that's going to shove your tee shot out to the right, which make that second shot so much longer. Not much to the screen. It's fairly flat, but finding it in two, well, that's a tall order. And look at that. Focus solely on the green. This is a bold play. And Henny, what's he looking at here? Setting up here from about 175 yards. Not too sure that was, but that didn't even come close to resembling a golf swing. Getting ready to play their third. Four strokes off the lead. <laughs> 19 feet to the hole. This is important. Big par putt here. Come on. Don't be shy. 
It was on a good line. And this one will be for Bogey. Trailing by five shots after that hole. The seventh provides a great opportunity if you can get a good driveway. This par five is a lovely hole. There are two menacing bunkers on this hole. The far one, the one right in the middle of the fairway, it looks like a zit from the back tee box. That is not the place to be. Rich, New Orleans, or should I say New Orleans. How good is it here to be on the bayou? This is a special week. It's a great eating week and a real festival atmosphere. It is, and it's hosted on a golf course that provides plenty of fireworks as well. What a cool design this is. It's wide open off the tee, but then the greens are minuscule in size, and they have these little runoff areas where it doesn't look like you're going to be in much trouble, but you start missing a couple of greens in a row, and you start getting these head scratching. Well, do I bump it in there? Do I flop it on the green? Do I take it low, high, medium, bump it into the... I mean, you have so many different ways of playing shots around these greens that you can outthink yourself. And I think that's what happens with a lot of these players is that usually you have one option when you miss the green. Here, you got a whole lot of them. So this golf course grabs your attention, especially around the greens, which makes it quite difficult for a lot of these players. And after that effort, this is how the leaderboard looks. Now, seven shots behind after that. The eighth is a short par four, Rich, and uh, modern players are starting to try to drive this green. They are, although I don't quite see it that way. It's such an easy second shot if you just lay it up short of those fairway bunkers down the left-hand side. You're not going to have much more than a flip sand wedge, gap wedge maybe, to a green that once again has a lot of movement to it. Looks like they're going with the pitching wedge. Yeah, not a bad effort, that one. Up onto the green and a chance to hold your putt. Be nice to see this one go down. Let's see if they make it. Looking really good. That's a great attempt from long range. So close. Now, eight shots back after that hole. The front nine finishes in a unique style, a par three of 210 yards length. This is actually a par three on the card, but most players look at it as a par four because there is nothing simple about this hole. If you bail out to the right, you're going to fall off into a low area where it's nearly impossible to chip it up close without taking a risk. So most players are just resigned to making four and moving on. That's just inside the range. A birdie putter waits. You know, Luke Donald once made all 400 plus attempts inside three feet on the PGA Tour. Okay, it's time to make the turn and a good time to reflect on the action so far, Rich. Yeah, they're, they're behind their rival right now through nine holes, but there's lots of time, lots of opportunities on this back nine to make up. It'll be interesting to see how it all ends up. The cart path is not always a bad place to be. Just pick the ball clean. That's tidy. Now over to Ricky Fowler. He's getting some airtime between him and his rival. He's two ahead. And Henny, what are they looking at here? Setting up this putt 17 feet from the cup. Get excited. This could go in. Putting for a par here. Down she goes. Let's head to the next. The par 5 11th, uh, very gettable, if, Rich, you can avoid that monster tree about 100 yards out. 
Exactly. Tee shots, once again, you're threading it between a couple of bunkers, but the second shot, there's a tree about 75 yards short of this green, and you've got to figure out a way around it. Do you draw it around it? Do you hit a fade around it? What do you do? No easy task for any of these players. Green sits above the player just a little bit and, again, has a lot, a lot of movement on it. Oh, wouldn't that have been nice? 11 feet to the cup. Rolling end to end, this looking nice. Ooh. He's got a par out here. Let's see if he can make it. Sitting at two over for the day. Well, the 12th is certainly one of the stronger holes on the back nine. This par four measuring just under 500 yards. You want to try and hug the left-hand side as best you can to shorten up the hole as much as you can, but still avoid that bunker if at all possible. Second shot, the green up there sits a little bit caddy corner to the players, so working the golf ball in there for left to right for your second shot would be the play. Scorecard filled with threes never hurts. Good putt to make this. I can't believe this. Is this going to go in? Wow, that's misjudged. This putt is about eight feet. This is what they have left for par. The game can be frustrating, can't it? Just a tiny putt is all that remains. Our current leader is up by three shots. Reach the 13th is a short par four, but a really good one, depending on how much you want to take off. There's really no real reason to go right at the green, Luke, with a tee shot, even if you have the power to get there because you just can't stop it on the green. If anything, you want to hit it out to the right where your next shot is going straight up the green. This is a very flat green, but is perched well above the fairway. It's a wonderful birdie opportunity. Now let's switch our focus to Ricky Fowler. He's two strokes ahead in this group rivalry today. And he's down there. You got a read? Has to put this one downhill. It's always good to cozy it up to the hole on a long putt, isn't it? Let's get back to it, shall we? Three over par. inside the range and that'll promote a good move up the standings trailing by eight strokes now after that hole well for all the opportunities 13 provides you you don't get too many here at the par 3 14th it's a beast as easy of a birdie opportunity as the 13th was, 14, yeah, not so much here. Even though the green is quite large in size, it's difficult to hit with a long iron.
Going with the five wood. Oh, well played. Now over to Ricky Fowler. Coming off a bogey on the last hole. Well, that's the perfect shape. Just controlling a fade. Oh, good look at a birdie here. If they can sink this, they'll pull ahead of Fowler. This could get interesting. Ouch, that hurts. Three feet to go here to the hole. That's a great play and a great time because they've not only moved up the leaderboard, they've now moved one shot in front of their rival. Our current leader is enjoying a one-shot lead. The 15th is certainly no cakewalk either. A par four measuring just under 500 yards. This is the time where you need to have the best drive of the day. Take it out to the right, avoid the bunkers down the left-hand side. And the green, once again, it's got some movement into a high spot in the front, a low area, and then a high area in the back. When the pin's all the way back, good luck making four. Playing now from the fairway bunker. <laughs> Sitting at two over. Let's see if we can make this. Keep the par on the card. Okay, steady now. Well, that hole's behind us. More to play. And with that effort, now three over for the tournament. Unfortunately, backing up slowly but surely on that leaderboard, Luke. Well, as we approach the final holes here at TPC Louisiana, the short par 416, Rich, it's a good one, but also a challenging one. Only the brave will take driver out on this short hole. Long irons, hybrids, fairway woods down the left-hand side is just fine. Uh, that always looked wet, didn't it? And here we are with the third shot. Fingers crossed for a good kick to the left. Oh, I don't mind this par putt. This one's online. Nicely hold and for par. Now let's switch our focus to Ricky Fowler. Yeah, he just made bogey on that last one. And let's see what that shot did to the leaderboard. So no change on the leaderboard for this player after that hole. If you want to win at TPC Louisiana, you've got to hit a couple of very important shots late. The tee shot here at 17, Rich, is one of them. A tee shot that no player likes to face. Water all the way down the left-hand side. The bailout zone out to the right falls away from the green. No fun whatsoever. Well, that'll play. Now over to Ricky Fowler. Yeah, he needs to press on that gas pedal. He's two strokes back from his rival. Well, that's got to have some impact on the scoreboard. Let's take a look. Now, eight shots back after that hole. The closing hole at TPC Louisiana has water all the way down the right, Rich, but that's not its only issue. Bailing out to the left, you'll find some menacing bunkers that you want no part of. However, if you find the fairway, going for it in two will be very tempting. Getting ready to play their third.
this punt is for a score of 73. And with that, this round comes to a close. Well, Henny, that was some match. We thought it would be a great rivalry, and it absolutely was. But how proud would this player be to have taken down Ricky Fowler despite not winning the event? Ah, uh, Luke, this player will be brimming with pride. What a great result. They challenged Ricky Fowler and beat him. Now, they'll be telling that story in the pub a few times in the coming weeks. Well, that's all we've got time for today. On behalf of myself, Luke Elvey, Rich Beam, Henny Koyak and John McCarthy, plus all the hard-working folks behind the action at 2K Sports, thanks for tuning in. Look forward to your company next time.